CNN uh, political director, David Chalian. And David, th these reversals, and I know you're about to run through some, they seem especially common when it comes to dilemmas of his own making. Without a doubt, Brooke, these are all dilemmas of his own making, and it is what you get when your governing style is to govern from the hip, right, without a fully thought through process. And I've been now thinking back to June. We've seen over the last five weeks a few different occasions where he really has reversed course on certain things. Remember on immigration, he initiated of his own accord that zero tolerance policy. What was the fallout from that? That children were being separated from their families. So much pressure from Republicans, from Democrats, from the public. You saw him sign an executive order to say, going to keep families together. We know the latest numbers show there are still separated families that have not yet uh, been reunified. How about when he went overseas and met with Theresa May? He gives this bombshell interview to the Sun newspaper. He totally undermines her on her Brexit plan, on her politics, by praising one of her future likely opponents. And then what does he do the next day at the press conference when the article comes out? He tells a story that he actually apologized to her and he was nothing but deferential to her. A character trait we normally don't see with Donald Trump. Then, of course, we saw on the trade issue you just mentioned, not that long ago, just a few weeks ago, Brooke, he was calling the EU a foe. I mean, they're some of our oldest and closest allies. America's oldest and closest allies are in the EU. He calls the EU a foe. Where is he now after a ton of pressure again from his base voters in farm country, from Republicans on Capitol Hill, from big business and companies, their bottom lines being affected by this? Now he's getting a kiss. He's holding a big statement. He says he's finding a solution. You're right. He'll say this is the art of successful negotiation. But clearly, he's reversing course here from the trade war rhetoric that he was in. And then when it comes to Russia, uh, we saw him in Helsinki side with Vladimir Putin basically over the U.S. intelligence community as to the matter of election meddling. It caused complete uh, havoc inside the White House because of the onslaught and the backlash they were receiving. What does he do? He gets back home, and this is a rare thing also. He's sitting there with scripted copy in his hand saying, well, I didn't, you know, I meant to say, wouldn't it, why wouldn't it have been Russia instead of why would it have been Russia that was in charge of the meddling? And he thought that clarified everything. I'm not sure that it did actually, Brooke. I think there are a lot of questions about the Putin-Trump relationship still, <laughs> but nonetheless, the president tried to clarify it. And then finally, he issues this surprise announcement, blindsides his director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, that he has invited Putin to the White House, of all places, uh, this fall. What did we learn from John Bolton, the national security advisor yesterday? That's mm -hmm. being put off until after the Mueller probe into 2019. Again, after receiving an onslaught of criticism. One of the things that you and I have observed about Donald Trump, Brooke, over the course of his business career, his campaign, and as president, has been he doesn't back down. He quadruples down. That, right. That's been a trademark sort of characteristic of him. And over these last five weeks, on these issues of his own making, he has definitely adjusted to or responded to the backlash uh, in ways that I don't think we've seen much before, before. So why do you think he's doing that? I mean, do you think it has to do with the fact that he's fired a number of people? A lot of people who he disagreed with are, you know, gone. And so he's making these decisions by own part himself. And so he then is having to walk them back. Like, why is this happening? It's a good question. There's no doubt that he's sort of on version two of his overall team, right? We, we have seen a lot of uh, exits from the administration in terms of the original uh, personnel that was around him who perhaps uh, guided process a bit more. We also have heard the president himself talk about how he has become more comfortable in the job. And in heading into the second year this year, he really thought, you know, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. He surrounded himself uh, with people that perhaps were not as likely to serve as guardrails against this kind of stuff. And as I said, he has a tendency to govern from the hip, to tweet it out, to respond to a Fox News segment, not with a process that is fully thought through, vetted, brought on validators and supporters so that when you roll it out, it goes more smoothly. And I think he's now facing the repercussions of that.